All right, welcome everybody. Uh, you're here for the Writing to Win Personal Statement um, workshop. Uh, and this uh, workshop is meant to, you know, if you're a little intimidated by the essay that you have to write for um, the scholarship or for other things that you might need a personal statement for, it can seem very daunting. 1300 words is a lot of words. You might think about where do I start? What do I include, right? How does that process look like for me? Um, this is the place that you're going to get some of those questions and some of the information to one, help ease some of those anxieties, uh, make you realize that it's a project you can take on and can complete by the deadline. And then also really how to write a really good personal statement, right? Besides the letters of recommendation um, to get, which uh, we went over yesterday, it's also really important to have a strong personal statement to set yourself apart from all the people who are applying for scholarships to make sure that the committee knows, hey, this is who I am, this is my experience, Right? Maybe these are some things that I've overcome and this is the potential and promise that I have. But how do you do that? Right? How do you make that into kind of like a concise way of uh, understanding all those good things? And so here from um, UROC or the Undergraduate Research Opportunity Center is Natasha Ullman and Nanda Warren from the Cooperative Learning Center and then also Kiara, Camille and Brendan who are all CLC tutors who are all going to play a role in helping make sure that you understand exactly what you have to do. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to these folks so they can take you through that process. Thanks for that introduction, uh, Jacinto. I think we can get right into it. Um, you can see who we are <laughs> by our names on the screen. Um, so we're really happy that you're here. So if you want to start by just uh, letting us know what you already know about the CSU and scholarship and what you want to know and uh, put that in the chat. And uh, it could be both or it could be uh, just pick one. And um, yeah, we'll give you a minute to think about that. And tutors, you can participate too. If there's anything that you wonder about the uh, CSUMB scholarship, you can ask them. Great, I see one question. Um, is it one application for multiple different opportunities? Yes, it is. That's the wonderful thing about the CSUMB scholarship packet is you fill out one application and then um, they, they sort it out um, to figure out what you are eligible for. Um, and Natasha or Jacinto, if you have any other insight into that, you can add, but my understanding is one application for all of them. Yes, that's correct. Um, all you have to do is submit one application and what they do is they match you with whatever scholarship that you or scholarships that you're going to be eligible for. And then they handle that process so you don't have to go out and apply for multiple different um, scholarships. You just do it once and then they take care of the rest for you. Oh, and by they, I mean financial aid. Just to add on to uh, what Jacinto and Nanda are talking about, and I've actually popped a, a link into the chat to the scholarship site, so you can see, um, you know, the prompt and and really what's required of you, um, and the really good question that's post po posted in the chat. Who reviews? Um, you'll see that it's staff and faculty, CSUMB. There's a, a large group of, of folks who do that. Um, so, and that is headed up by financial aid. So that's a really good question about who reviews them, because um, as you're writing, you want to think about your audience and what it is that they want to know about you and, um, you know, what uh, what kinds of details they would be interested in. Um, so really, they want to know uh, a picture of you as a person, because the other some of the other elements of your application are pretty factual, you know, your GPA and where you went to school and what classes you've taken and things like that. Um, but the personal statement is your opportunity to really present yourself as a, as a whole person. And I, I love um, what Kira put in the chat 
about um, to talk about your career goals, and you'll see this throughout our presentation today, uh, is really thinking about your personal statement as a future thinking statement. Um, it's about the things you're doing now or the stuff that you've learned. Maybe you're a community college transfer student and you've done a lot of really good work there, and you know, you're using that, and now where are you now at CSUMB? And then where are you going? So the where are you going is really important. So just to kind of, you'll hear us like talk about that, um, because they do, the, the, the reviewers want to see, um, they're taking a risk on you, right? And so they want to see, like, what are you thinking for in the future? It doesn't just stop when you graduate at CSUMB or you're, where you are right now. So really put on that future thinking hat um, and make a note to yourself to, to think about your career goals and where it is you want to go. Okay, if um, there are any more questions at this moment, we'll move on, but you can put questions in the chat at any time. All right, so the proposed agenda, um, we have a, you know, under an hour today um, to really cover a nice um, breadth of topics. We're going to do a writing warm up basically um, to get you started thinking. Um, whenever uh, we put these workshops together, we really want to make sure that you get an element of work done um, because it's not just about us sharing strategies and tips, which we will, but rather asking you to do some of that work so you can actually feel like you're you're making progress on this application. So we'll start with a writing warm up. What are you excited about? about. Um, we'll move into analyzing, like, what is the application prompt asking? So we're going to look specifically at the CSUMB scholarship and say, like, okay, what, what, do, we, what do you need to write about? Um, what is the application prompt asking? Um, brainstorming, we'll do a little bit of that about who you are and what's, what do you bring to the table? Um, a lot of folks, you know, they, they have questions about that. How much should I say? What should I add? So we'll do some brainstorming there. And then looking ahead, what are your next steps um, as you prepare for this February 18th deadline that Jacinto has um, popped into the chat? Thank you so much for putting that that in to remind us all of our deadline. Very important. So to start us out with a writing warm up, um, Camille's going to give you some instructions about what to do. Um, and so go ahead and pull out a piece of paper and a pencil, or you can open up a blank Google Doc um, to to we'll give you some time to write. Yeah, thank you, Nanda. So we are going to start with the writing warm up just to get you guys a little bit more comfortable with um, the type of writing that Natasha was talking about, about talk, thinking about the future. Um, so as you can see, um, we're kind of going to focus on these two sentences is what career you want to pursue or what career you're pursuing at CSUMB and why you're interested or how do you how would that help you in the future? How is how is your education here at CSUMB going to help you to advance in the future? So if you just want to take like two minutes to kind of think about exactly, you know, think about your major right now and how do you plan on using that in the future? Take some time and about two minutes and then we'll check back in. So I just started a timer and we'll let you know when two minutes is up. The idea is don't stop writing until you've got uh, something down on paper.
Um, it looks like the two minutes are just about up. Um, so if you just wanna finish your thoughts, you can just wrap it up a little bit. All right, that's two minutes. <laughs> All right, so um, next, I believe we are going to kind of just go over these and talk about them a little bit more. Um, did you guys have any, um, did anything guys, did anything really like you guys trouble? Did you feel like stumped anything? Did nothing really make sense or was it just kind of confusing, you know? We had just to share, we had um, someone come into the CLC uh, towards the end of last semester working on this prompt. And they said, I really have no idea what my career goals are. I have zero idea. And um, so, you know, what do we do when we have that kind of situation? I think that's uh, not unusual. It's not like we all have our lives planned out. What could you do in that situation? I don't know if the tutors have any idea or Natasha, if you have any thoughts. Yeah. Um... From my personal experience, I just completed my personal statements for my grad applications last semester. So I was really focusing on, you know, how does my major here at CSCMB really help me for the future? And it was difficult because obviously there's no exact way of knowing what I'm going to be doing in the future with my major. So it's really just kind of seeing, you know, as it says, like what you're interested in, what do you hope to do? I mean, more like that, I mean, it doesn't have to be set in stone. But more like, you know, this is what I wish to do as, as, at the moment, you know, this is what I want to get back. I think that point that Camille brought up is perfect because I think, and, and it follows what Nanda was saying too, like we cannot have it figured out minute by minute, right? But what we can put in our application is here is you know, this is the major, I'm a psychology major, and in the future, I'm looking to do psychology, you know, be a psychologist or go into the clinical psychology track or, you know, anything that's something that connects to your major, as Camille, Camille was saying, I think that's such a strategic way of doing it, um, just to show the reviewer that you do have a plan, because solid personal statements, especially for money, when you're asking for money, what you're putting on the page is kind of letting the reviewers know that you have a plan. Great, great tip, Camille. Thank you. Yeah, and there's obviously, you know, there's no way exact, they're not going to know exactly, like, if you, if you decide to change your mind, they're not going to like, take the money back. So, you know, obviously, you still have, you're still able to kind of change your mind, but just like, at the moment, what is your plan? They just want to see like, okay, like, you know, you're completing the steps toward a much bigger goal. You're just not doing this and then going kind of back and forth between many different things, just almost a little bit of stability. Great, thanks for that explanation, Camille. If anyone wants to share what they wrote, uh, feel free, you can pop it in the chat or you can unmute and, and share if you like. You don't have to, but sometimes it it's almost like you're you're kind of trying out your, your writer's voice that you're gonna use in this personal statement. So sometimes it can help to, to share it out. We'll show you an example as well. Do you want to talk about this, Camille? Yeah. Okay. So um, these are just a couple of samples um, that you can kind of, you know, put your ideas in a little bit, mix and match. Um, so the first one is my career should be a full time writer in five years because I'm interested in telling stories of, around the world, about, around us. Um, so this is like I was saying before, it just kind of shows them, you know, this is what I want to do because of this. Um, and it can also help a little bit more if you say exactly like how you plan to give back, you know, 
maybe to your community or give back to, you know, to your surrounding environment. Um, just to show also that you're interested in helping, you know, grow the community and the world around you and give, tell people there's, uh, tell stories about people. Um, and then the other one is the second one talks about your experiences. So it's very important to talk about how you, your specific experiences and everything you've done at CSUMB, how that helps you and how that helps you work towards your goal and becoming, for example, a writer. You know, so for example, uh, for myself, um, I wrote about my experiences at an internship. So I really got a lot of my, got a lot of um, the examples from there and just how I plan to use that and how that connects to my major. So just important connecting all your experiences, your volunteer work to what you're studying and how that helps you toward like your much bigger goal of becoming a writer, for example. Does anybody want to share or kind of talk about what um, what they're doing or how that all their experiences and everything? Natasha, do you want to talk for a second about what you just put in the chat? I think that's a great tip. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think oftentimes we see template language like that and they think, okay, and then we have to write something different, but you don't. <laughs> that's actually why Camille was introducing these two slides as templates for you to fill in, right? Because you, the, what you're going to say is going to be so unique from the person sitting next to you um, writing with the same template. So these templates are fantastic to get started thinking about like, what is it that I want to to, to kind of do in my life and in the world? And, and why am I in this major? And, and what's my sort of next step? Um, but it also gets you to succinctly think, you know, use these um, particular templates. Like my career goal is to be a what, right? You can say that in your in your personal statement. And you know what? Reviewers actually love that because it's very direct and they're actually looking for that particular language. Um, my understanding is there sometimes it's about, you know, close to a thousand applications for this. I mean, I, I don't know, maybe I, I'm wrong in terms of my numbers and I know Hasinto and Nanda have maybe can correct me, but there's quite a few folks who actually apply for the scholarship. Um, so there's a lot of reading that's happening and there's a lot of reviewers, right? So thinking about the reviewers reading all these applications, you want really direct language. And these templates can help you with that very specific direct language to get their attention and be like, oh, look, this person has a goal. Oh, look, this is what this person is doing. Thanks, Natasha. Um, let's go ahead and look specifically at what the prompt asks. So I don't know um, how far you all are in the process. Um, if you've actually opened up and started the application and just um, FYI, you can do that even if you're not ready to submit it. And in fact, you should go ahead and open it and see everything that it's asking for. And then if you start entering things and then click save, it'll just let you come back to it and pick it up again. So we do recommend that so that you can see everything that, that is in there. It's not a big surprise. Um, so let's take a look at what the prompt is. Um, so this is it. I'll just re read it out loud to you. And then Kiara is going to help us break this down a little bit. So it says, please provide a 1300 word personal statement in which you describe um, your professional aspirations, academic and personal achievements, community service, and that's community, campus, and or family, and any obstacles overcome on the way to where you are now. If you have a history of participation and or leadership, please include this information in your personal statement. So um, I know what the tutors often recommend people do is copy paste this at the top of your document and use it um, as you start to develop your ideas. Um, and there's actually some other steps that we can do before you even like start writing um, to make sure that you're going to hit on everything that they're asking for. Oops, sorry. <laughs> there you go, Kira. Um, walk us through the process a little bit. Thanks, Nanda. Oh, sorry, my video went haywire. Um, so this is a strategy called RAFTS. So we are the CSUMB Otters, we wrapped up. We're gonna use RAFTS for our writing advantage. So RAF, as you probably know, is a, it's an acronym. We at CSUMB love our acronyms, but they stand for a specific thing and this will help you kind of think about when you start writing your personal statement. And you can use this uh, 
analysis method for any writing. So this is just specific for the CSUB scholarship. So you can tweak this if you're doing something else or you're applying for another scholarship. So the R is role. What role are you as a writer? Are you writing this as a student? Are you writing this as an expert? Are you writing this as somebody, you know, talking to your local official? What is your role? What do you, what role do you have? A is for audience. Who's your audience? So this is where you have to think about who you're writing this for. So for the scholarship, I'm going to write this for financial aid. I'm going to write this for the review committee. I'm writing this for my letters of reference, because usually this helps if you have some semblance of personal statement. So your letters and your uh, personal statement are linked, and that's a huge tip I'm going to give you guys. Make sure that your letters of recommendation and your personal statement are linked somehow. And that'll also help your letter writer write a really great custom letter for you. F is for format. What kind of responses are you doing? Are you writing a letter to your friend in Germany? Are you, are you writing an essay? Are you writing a description of something? So you gotta think about format. Arguably the most important letters of this is T and S. T is for task. What are the verbs in the prompt asking you to do? So verbs are actions. Look for the action words in the prompt. And S is strong keywords. What are the key words that you need to include in your response? Hint, you're gonna to wanna to use these words when writing these personal statements because if you don't have those key words, your paper's probably gonna to move to the side and not look at it again. So you wanna make sure you're looking for those strong keywords. We'll go through that activity in just a minute. Perfect. <laughs> So we're going to do a little activity right now. So I just talked about T and S. So let's put this together. So we're going to do a little activity. How many of you guys know how to use Zoom annotate? Just curious. Not, okay, I can walk you through it. So Zoom has a little thing where you can draw on someone's screen, which I'm going to do right now. So we're going to look for the T and the S, the task and the strong keywords. I'll give you guys an example. Provide, that is a T, that's a verb, remember? And then a personal statement. And professional aspirations. So I want you guys, to, if I, you can't find the Zoom annotate, just unmute, speak up so I can help you find it. This is the activity that we're going to do. If you haven't used annotate before, if mm -hmm. you just kind of mouse up to the top of the screen where you have all your Zoom controls, mm -hmm. there's like three dots that say more. And um, one of the options should be annotate. annotate. Right. Yeah, you click on that and you'll get a little toolbar that has like a mouse, a text, what I call a little pencil, like a squiggly line, stamp. <laughs> if you can't find it, please let us know. No, I'll guide you through it. And Kara, can you say again, what uh, what should they underline? Should they underline the keywords? Yes. So and let's circle, underline circle S and circle T. Perfect. Thank you. Just like that. I'll give you guys a few minutes to do that. If you need help, please speak up. I'd be happy to help you. Or if you can't do annotate, just say a word and I'll underline it and circle it for you. That's fine as well. There we Personal achievement. Perfect. Okay. What what I circle or underline that? Uh, so underline. Perfect. Thank you. Anybody else see anything? Oh, somebody underlined community. Perfect. What else do you guys see? Oh, and there's the other other one. Perfect. Obstacles. Mm-hmm. Good. I 
I see one right here. Do you guys see anything else? Perfect, thank you. Okay, let's see. I think there's one more that we need to include. The last keyword. Leadership. Perfect, thank you. Yep, exactly. So this is the TNS you can underline circle or if you are doing this in Google Docs, you can use different color highlighter, different color font. But the idea is I want you to take away from this is this is how you can deconstruct the prompt and this is how you can help organize your paper too. Um, so you just need to print it on a piece of paper, circle, doodle, you need to highlight it, whatever you need to do, go for it. This is supposed to help and you can do this with any prompt you have, even if it's for grad school because you guys will write something similar if you're applying to grad school. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> I really like how uh, somebody underlined not just community service, but also the parentheses. So that's a really good attention to detail because what this prompt is telling you is that community service is being defined as community, campus, and or family. And um, you're gonna see that a little bit as we start to brainstorm some examples um, because the fact that they put that in the prompt is, is kind of opening a door for you to talk about other ways that you spend your time that is of value to your community um, and not just like the kind of stereotypical things that we think of as community service. Um, should I go ahead, Kira? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, let me clear this. Let me clear the drawings for you. <laughs> got it. Okay, got oh, it. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> okay, so let's move into some brainstorming. So now that you have some ideas about what um, what are the required elements, um, we're gonna kind of break it down and see what what you could possibly include. And so it's a group brainstorm. So as you come up with things, you're just gonna add stickies you, and you can pick any frame um, to this jam board to add to, you don't have to start at the beginning. Um, so if somebody wants to pop that in the chat um, here, actually, let me- I got it. it. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, so I can see people are joining um, and I'll go ahead and leave it on my screen as well. So you can follow along this way if you like, or you can make this screen smaller and, and go ahead and type things on there because we'd love to have you add stuff. So you can see that we have, um, we have, we're still using the RAFS model. So this first frame is just kind of brainstorming stuff about the audience and the role um, so you can put something on here, uh, you know, if you have an idea, uh, you notice that your role, you know, it could be student, but it could also be your future role. Like, how do you want to present yourself to the audience? Um, do you want to emphasize that you're a future educator that sort of helps you choose the details that you're going to include? Um, do you want to present yourself as someone who's willing to um, give back to the community? So, you know, in that case, you would, you would have that be sort of a theme. So um, that's something that you could brainstorm. And if you don't want to start there, you can start on one of the other frames. Um, here, we're going into some of the keywords that you just identified from the prompt. So what are some things that would count as academic and personal achievements? What could go there? Just anything goes, because this is brainstorming, right? Um, if you want to go to the next frame, you could add things that are about um, community service. So what counts as community service? What could you include? The next one is uh, participation and leadership. So, um, you know, anything that you can think of, you know, notice that, you know, it doesn't have to be, again, the stereotypical, you know, I was president of X club. Um, it could be mentoring even within the family. If you present that in the right way, um, it could really be a powerful example. Um, and then we already put quite a few here for you to think about, um, but you can add more. What are examples of obstacles overcome? Sometimes people like this is the easiest thing for them to write about. And for some people, it's the hardest, you know, because it's like, oh, you know, no, it's, it's actually been pretty easy. And then you have to think about it from another standpoint. So um, it, wherever you're at, um, just think of some examples. Oh, there's one more. Um, we'll do that one later. So let's just do uh, the first five frames. 
um, take a few minutes to add to anyone that's any ones that catch your attention. Oh, and I, I forgot to say, if you haven't used Jamboard before, the stickies are over here. It's this little square. Um, I'm just going to put a plug out there for the role. Um, just as a reminder, I think many of us are involved in different programs across campus, CAMP, EOP, TRIO, the CLC as a tutor. You know, there's a lot of things going on, right, that we're involved in. And so thinking about those roles that you play, um, you know, that that could that could easily go into this particular essay and anything any sort of identity markers that you um, you know identity groups that you identify with um, ways in which you think about your identities and how they help you sort of make decisions and go about the world um, those are really I think really cr perfect in the in the role section. I like that we've added here CSUMB faculty. Yes, there are faculty on the committee, and it's good to keep that in mind. Um, I remember one time reading a draft where the writer was sort of complaining about their teachers and how hard they made life. And, and it's true that you want to have obstacles overcome, but you have to think about your audience, right? Like, how is a professor going to interpret this and everything? So these things matter for sure. Great one, conducting a major presentation for an on-campus organization. So thinking about things that you've done on campus that are an achievement, and especially if like making presentations was, was new and challenging for you, you know, that's an accomplishment. Um, so that, that's great and very specific, which is good. Oh, and I forgot to say, if, if you don't wanna do the, on the jam board or you're having trouble with that, you can also put stuff in the chat, it's totally fine. Oh, great. I see somebody added being a camp student. That camp is such a great program because you do have so many leadership opportunities. You have opportunities to mentor the incoming class and also to support each other. Um, I know it's a program where they do a lot of support of each other. And so you can highlight some of those specific things that you've done. Um, that's a really good one. Yeah, and just to follow up on that, um, you know, when you're inside of those communities, right, they're like only su like they're sub communities, they're like you're a student, but then you're also part of these little sub communities, I think, inside of your CSUMB student role. Um, and I think those are the ways you can start to frame your essay, right, because those are the things that make you unique, because you're part of this particular community. Um, so, you know, think you can think about the role and sort of your participation and leadership in that way as well. And when you're talking about this section, um, you can do what we actually kind of put it on. Let's see, I think we put it on another frame. Um, I don't know what was on this one. Sorry. Sorry, I'm making you dizzy going back and forth. Oh, this is what I wanted to highlight. Um, what was your impact? So, you know, you can, you don't want to just list your things that you, oh, I was in this club, I was in that club. 
I'm in this program and that program, you want to expand on it. And this is how you get to your 300, 1300 words, because sometimes people think like, oh, I can't write that much about myself. Um, you know, really uh, explain to us what um, what kind of difference you made on campus or in the community or or among your um, cohort of, of um, you know, classmates that you're with, um, you know, what did you contribute, even if it was just to a team project um, or within your family or within your um, club or whatever it was, uh, what, what impact did you have? Like if you hadn't been there, what wouldn't have happened? So um, those are great things to highlight without, you know, feeling like you're bragging too much because all you're doing really is explaining what you did in some detail. Yeah, and we like to think about that over an undergraduate research as contribution. So what is your contribution to the campus? What is, that's the impact, right? What are you leaving behind? We often talk about legacy, like what is your legacy as you're leaving, you know, you're graduating CSUMB and that might seem really big, but a legacy could be, you know, I was part of a club and we put together the bylaws for that club or we put, you know, we, it could be, your legacy could be so many different kinds of things. Um, so I think that that is like impact, legacy, contribution. Um, those are all language, you know, you can work with um, within that sort of impact that Nanda starred there. Also notice that some of these aren't, um, you know, you know, club or or you know, group activities. They're just within a class. So you can show leadership within a class by leading a group project or um, you know, strong collaboration or teamwork within a class. Okay, we've got some good things here. So volunteering can be on campus or off campus. That's really important to highlight. Um, let's stay on this one for a minute. Does anyone have anything to add to this? Because um, I've also seen people get stuck a little bit on their academic achievements. Like, what can you put there? Because, of course, you can put, you know, if you're on the dean's list, of course, you want to include that. Um, but what if you're not on the dean's list? <laughs> can you still have academic achievements? Yes, absolutely. So let's let's see what other kinds of things there could be. Um, this is, I think, from a, a a previous workshop, but I liked it, so it kind of left it on there. It could just be a high mark on an essay. There could be some class that was really hard for you, that that it, it, you know you really had to work at, and then by the end you got it. Oh, that's a great story to tell, right? Um, great. And then the group project could work really well here too, because that's another academic or and or personal achievement as well. Great improvement in a class, fantastic. So that's a great story to tell, you know, if, if there was something that um, you really had to work hard at. I wonder if um, honors and awards would fit here. Yeah, certainly. Any kinds of honors or awards that you've gotten um, would go here. And then again, besides just listing them, you know, you can talk a little bit about, you know, how did you qualify for that? Did someone nominate you? That'd be a great thing to include. I think one of the things that um, when I was doing a lot of this, this work in terms of learning about scholarship writing and, and what makes for competitive scholarship writing is coming across some research that actually stated, and I'm always going to remember this, that scholarship committees are more often it's not that they always do, but more often going to award people that have scholarships already. <laughs> and I was like, what? Because I thought to myself, wouldn't you want to award people who don't have scholarships? And that's true, too. There are quite a few people who get awarded scholarships. So but the research was backing it up to say that people when they're in a review committee, it's all about taking risk. And so if they see that other companies, other organizations, other scholarships, right, that you've gotten, whether it be community college, something from the community, um, you know, th that's a risk that somebody took on you to give you money to to get to your goal, whatever that goal is that you you talked about. So um, don't forget that. Right. So I think some people sort of think like, oh, I'm not going to mention that because they might think that I have a lot of money or, you know, that I'm not. But actually, you really should add um, any sort of awards or honors that you've received, um, you know, in the community or, or, or in school and that sort of thing. Um, so I thought that was an interesting piece of research. 
And another very specific example that just went up being a full time student while working two part time jobs and then ending the semester with two A's and a B. So very, very concrete details, all great things to include, whatever your case may be. Okay, let's just look through if there's anything new. And yeah, so this, so you can see that the same detail could fit in multiple categories and you can, you know, just put the story and then emphasize different things about it, you know, by saying this was a great, you know, academic achievement for me. Again, like just use the language of the prompt, like you don't need to make it so complicated. Um, but then also, you know, mention that this was something that you had to work quite hard to, to accomplish because of your, your unique situation. So you kind of hit on two parts of the prompt at once. Um, and I think we can probably relate to a lot of things that are on this page in terms of, you know, going to college is all about adapting to a new environment, a new setting. Um, probably everyone has experienced that. So if you sort of um, show your particular experience with it and what that was like, um, that would be an, an example of an obstacle. And um, mental health, I think, is something that everyone can, can relate to. And if that's something that you've overcome then, and you're comfortable talking about it, that, that's fine to include. Um, and usually what we tell people with these obstacles is don't just mention the obstacle, but also don't forget the overcome part. How did you overcome it? Um, what did you learn from it? How did it help you grow? Because that's part of your story and that's the part that your um, readers are gonna be especially interested in. Any other thoughts or anything to add to, to this brainstorming or questions? I'm just adding a, into the chat exactly what you said, Nanda, because that's a very, very important important point about the obstacles overcome. Um, I think a lot of times I've, I've worked with writers that write a lot about the obstacle because they're kind of getting it out and then they're like, and this happened and that happened. And then all of a sudden you're into like three pages of the obstacle. And that's why I think working with the CLC staff is brilliant because you, you can work with another writer to, and the writer can help you sort of say, okay, what was the actual, you know, what was the actual obstacle? And then spend more time talking about how you overcame that obstacle. Cause that's what reviewers want to see. Um, actually. So, so when you think about the ratio of that story that you're telling about that obstacle, obstacle, it, you know, I've seen really brilliant, like one sentences, one to two sentences about that obstacle, but spending more time talking about reflecting on like, you know, why and how, how I overcame that and how I made steps to amend or, or whatever it is that that obstacle was. So I'm going to pop that in the chat, but I just wanted to kind of uh, vo verbalize or vocalize that. Great. Okay, I'm just going to walk right back through this, just to see if there's anything new, and then we'll move on. So hopefully this gave you a few ideas of things that you can in, in, include. So, you know, you can steal from each other and say, oh, you know, actually I've done that. I'm gonna develop that into my essay. Um, oh, great. Somebody added on the audience, potential hires, like people who might hire you, potential employers. I think that's a really great point. And even if they're not physically on the community, it, on the committee, the scholarship committee, even if they aren't, which sometimes they are, um, that's also your audience because that's the ultimate goal is, or that's one of the ultimate goals is to, you know, have graduates who are successful in the job market. All right. So, at this point, what we would like to do is actually um, break you into some little rooms and don't be afraid, don't go away. I know it can be scary. It's like, oh, I need to go to a breakout room. Um, all we're going to do is kind of put you in with a tutor and actually we're just going to do two tutors because I know Brendan has to go to class um, if he hasn't left already. Um, and it's your opportunity to just talk. So Natasha and I aren't going to be there. Um, it's just you and a tutor and you can just chat. So if you have some ideas about like, I think I'm thinking about including this for my obstacle or do you think that's a good obstacle? How can I talk about that? Or do you think this is a good example of uh, academic achievement? Um, or I'm not sure if I should focus more on this or that. It's just time to talk about that with your peers and with the tutor. So um, yeah, take advantage of the time. We're just gonna put you in there for like five minutes or so. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing so I can put you in those rooms. And if you're not even ready to have that conversation, don't worry about it. Um, you can just introduce yourself to the tutor. These are your friends, they're in your, your corner and it's really good to get to know them. Um, okay, I've got one more to assign. 
Okay, about five minutes in your room. I hope you were able to meet somebody new. Um, and just remember that these folks are here for you and they're happy to meet with you and talk more about your um, application essays. And we have a pretty big team of, of writing tutors. So just um, stop by, we're in the library on the second floor or look online um, and we'll give you the website at the end so that you can book an appointment with them. We also have a lot of Zoom appointments. So if you're not physically on campus, you can still talk to them. So we're just going to give you a few more pieces of information and then you'll be on your way. Cool. Thanks, Nanda. So I'm going to finish up and I also um, added our evaluation into the chat. So when you, it's just a couple questions just to give us some um, feedback as to what worked, um, what areas you liked. Um, so remember, this is about a story about yourself, but it's not simply just a story about who you are. There's specific things you really want to make sure to push in. Um, what evidence shows that you're a successful student, such as um, what have you accomplished at CSUMB so far? And that could be, I transferred to CSUMB. That's a huge accomplishment, right? So if you're a new transfer student, that I think is, I, I'm, I was a former transfer student. So I know that, that can be just a challenge in itself and just a huge accomplishment. Um, so, you know, what evidence shows? So don't be afraid to really be really um, specific in that evidence because you know you transferred, but you have to put that on the page, right? So what have you accomplished at CSUMB so far? Um, what is your merit so far? Maybe you have um, specific uh, G GPA, you can say, you know, I have a 4.0 or, you know, the, the writer that actually put on the sticky notes, you know, I, I had all the, I was working two jobs, I had this going on, I was taking care of a family and I, I managed to, to finish my semester strong. So those are the kind of pieces and, and evidence that you really want to showcase in your in your writing. So don't forget to, to really be detailed and specific about that. Um, what kind of recognition, formal or informal, have you received? Um, and that can look like a lot of different kinds of ways. Sometimes teachers or our faculty will invite you to become a TA for their class, for example, it could be a recognition, um, you know, because somebody's inviting you and, and they're kind of, they see the strengths that you have and what you're going to bring into this, into this particular situation. There are a lot of different kinds of recognitions, but thinking about that, and we talked a little bit about scholarships earlier as well. Um, what are you con contributing to the CSUMB community and the larger community so far? So you might have already, you know, literally this is your first week here at CSUMB and you might not have even had a chance to look around, but start to imagine, for example, if you're going back to that so I'm a psychology major and I want to eventually be a clinical psychologist, let's say, um, maybe one of your goals could be to get involved with the, with the psychology um, campus on uh, or psychology club on campus or to meet some psychology faculty and talk about, you know, what does it mean to be a um, a, a, you know, clinical psychologist. Um, so I think thinking about those particular things are really important in terms of, you know, where are you and how are, what are you going to contribute to CSUMB? And then also, and I think this is where the CLC staff is can really help out is what are those persuasive arguments on the page so far. So as you draft this and write this up, uh, I think, you know, other writers can really help you pick out certain things that are like, oh, yeah, you really want to mention this. Oh, yeah, make sure to, to mention that. So um, I think that's that's the brilliance of actually sharing your writing, even though it can be really scary, even for me as a, as a person who writes all the time, I'm always nervous, but I, I know what a tremendous benefit it is to get that feedback. Um, so what writers and writing feedback can also help with is kind of creating that theme, right? That theme about like, oh, okay, are we looking at like persistence? Are we looking at, you know, what's the theme that's coming out um, of, of the writing so far of your unique experiences? And I think, um, you know, working with a CLC writing staff can really help, um, you know, sort of an outsider's perspective and kind of look into that piece of writing and go, hey, did you see, I kind of feel like there's a theme of X emerging and you all can talk about that and say like, is that a theme you actually want in your document? So next steps, Nana mentioned this at the top of the hour, start your application online and save it, really important. Um, that's important for anything you're ever applying for. Go ahead and go into that application the minute you've decided you wanted to apply, just to check it out, make sure you can get in and do all that stuff. Um, you never wanna save that to the, to the last minute. Um, and Nanda also made a really good point in the letters of recommendation yesterday is um, you can put your letters of recommendation uh, emails in there and that will already be 
that, that will start to generate um, emails for them. Um, so you don't have to submit your application right away to get those letter writers um, emails generated. Do a lot of brainstorming and keep and deep thinking. That's why we offered this workshop today to get you, you know, maybe you've already started thinking about it, but to also think you, you know, think about like what am I going to say about, you know, as it relates to the prompt. Really, really important. Use rafts, you know, you have some strategies and tips. Create a timeline on a plan or a schedule for sitting down to write and revise. When are you going to go visit the CLC and the folks that you just met in the breakout rooms? Um, and you know, continue that conversation with uh, with your writing uh, tutor at the CLC. We want to say thank you, um, and uh, I think I'm going to open it up to Nanda um, to talk a little bit about Cooperative Learning Center. Um, but if you have any questions about undergraduate research, our contact is on there as well. Thanks. So um, here's our contact information. If someone wants to pop that in the chat, um, or actually I can because I, I have my chat open right now. Um, but uh, we're oh, tutoring actually starts on Monday. Um, sorry, it says tomorrow, but that's wrong. <laughs> it's actually Monday. Um, so starting Monday, you'll be able to either book an appointment online, book an appointment in person, um, or right now you can already go to our website and see what our drop-in hours where you don't need an appointment and you just stop on by. So um, thank you, Kira. <laughs> I can't like type and talk at the same time. So Kira, just put that link in the chat. Go ahead and take it out. Bookmark it. Come and see us for your school assignments, your scholarship as a whatever, um, or just come in here and do some writing so that you, you know, don't procrastinate. <laughs> so we really look forward to seeing you. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. Yeah, and thank you for your time and energy. And thank you, Jacinto, for inviting us. Yeah, it's always great to collaborate with you all, trying to help students be successful and get a little extra money for their education. And like I said, um, anybody who registered for this and attended, um, I'm going to go ahead and send the recording of this out once it's uploaded to YouTube probably Monday or Tuesday next week. So be looking for that. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you.